For this lesson, I'm using the 0203 Explore the Timeline panel project file. You can find this with the media files that accompany this lesson. The Timeline panel is where you'll build your sequences, arrange clips, make simple audio adjustments, and change the timing of edits. I've got a basic sequence here that has a long music clip. There it is. I single clicked to select it. And a number of video clips. Here we are. I'm single clicking to select each of these and highlight them. When I play, as the playhead arrives at a new clip, we'll see the contents of that clip in the program monitor. So constructing a sequence is largely placing clips one after another from left to right inside the timeline panel. You'll notice that we've got video tracks and audio tracks, and there's a line dividing them that you can click on and drag to change which part of the sequence you're looking at. As your sequences become more complex, this dividing line might become more useful. Note that I'm clicking here to the left of the line dividing the track headers from the tracks themselves, not in between the tracks in the main part of the timeline panel. There's a very useful keyboard shortcut that you can use to make any panel in Premiere Pro full screen, and it's the Accent Grav key. I'm just pressing it right now. Whichever panel your mouse cursor is over will go full screen, and you can press the button again to go back to the regular size. Now my cursor's over the project panel, full screen, and back again. The location of that key does vary, so you may have to search for it on your keyboard. Each video track in the timeline panel has a track output option. Here, I'm just clicking the eyeball to turn off track output for video one. And now, I'll still get the music if I play, but none of the pictures. I'll just click that button to turn the track back on. You also have a mute option for audio tracks. If I click this M for mute track and play, I'm pressing the space bar now. No audio. I'll turn that back off and the music returns. You'll notice that you can click and drag to move clips around on the timeline. In fact, it's a single operation. You don't need to click and release and then click and drag. I can just drag in a single step. And you'll notice if I drag over to the left, this clip segment, as it's called, snaps into position. You feel it more than you see it, but you, you can just about see that clip jumps into position at the end of the previous clip. It lines up perfectly. This feature is called snapping, and you can turn it off and on at the top left of the timeline panel by clicking this button here, snap. I can also select a number of clips by lassoing. I'm going to click and drag here to make a marquee selection. And now that I've got four clips selected, I can move them all together. Selection is important in Premiere Pro. And of course, you can tell which clips are selected because they're highlighted. Notice also that we have the option to resize these track headers quite a lot. Again, I'm clicking to the left of the line here where all of the controls are. I can make these waveforms really quite tall. And you'll notice that some of the controls in the track header are just not visible until you make the track header taller. If you have a mouse wheel, you can use that to change the height as well. There's a navigator at the bottom of the timeline panel which is also a zoom control. You can click on these handles to zoom in and out. And you'll notice at the top left of the timeline panel, we have a time code indicator. This is where we are in our sequence based on hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So that's an overview of the main features of the timeline panel in Adobe Premiere Pro.